Hello, my name is Sandra Kolenkevich and I live in Marietta, Ohio, which is in southeastern Ohio, where the Ohio River meets the Muskingum River. Allows a body. What God are you talking about? And which version of the sky should I align with? My own atmosphere, a thing I regret almost as much as breathing in the air others have exhaled first. I'm trying to understand your promises that make no sense to me, but may be fully embraced by others outside my orbit. Is it gold you want most? Love, notoriety for the superior, whether in pants or dress, with achievements we've conceded even before you arrive, like the light blinds us from your corner of the heavens, as if paradise were your own. Until I know the source of your ambition, I don't know how to consider what you say you'll do for me or the behaviors I must assimilate to be accepted, the actions I must take in exchange. Some gods have giant legs and in one step span the scene. Others can spend eternity crossing the lake in a small boat. A third transformed himself into a tortoise and wants to be followed to the desert. Yet another immolates and returns. I love them all, I say. As long as they don't want to hurt me, will listen, can tell a reason for the barren parts of blue where suffering has leached the pigment as long as they explain the unfathomable, forgive the unholy, offer the kind of hope which allows happiness in the midst of misery, provides direction for the uncertain, allows a body to disregard and overcome its pain. This is a poem about corporate corruption, cover up. The exercise in the boardroom was meant to compare and contrast our discovery with loss of investment and revenue. The faces looking back had nothing to say. The mouths silent, full of words we tried to pick from our teeth as if they had chewed on mouthful of leaves trying to get the vitamins missing from our food. Later, he and I stood on the berm where the steps of the clinic used to be, the view blanched but free for all the buildings had been torn down. What lay before us seemed a field of asphalt and concrete slabs. We're not even going to dig those up, he said. He kicked at the soil with the two of a wing-tipped shoe. The wind will cover the place with grass. I was in first grade, six years old, when President John F. Kennedy was shot on November 22nd, 1963. And this is a poem about that day. November 22nd. Arch, the primary school janitor, talked low and serious to the bus driver, though we could not have heard a normal voice over our shouts of glee at the day's fresh deliverance combined with the diesel engines knocking under the yellow hood. The president's been shot. Someone cried as the doors flipped closed and Archie's back turned slowly from us, his day having started at 5 a.m. He was nearly 80, had been 19 in the Great War, now called World War I, and forgotten. He moved back to the exit he'd left propped open with a brick the afternoon a hot one for November in Massachusetts, the boiler already on. The sun changed with the seasons on the bus ride home. 
By then the leaves were gone, but for stragglers, the air without humidity, so edges were sharp. By afternoon, the sky had a whiteness that would evaporate when cold arrived to become blue. The sun dappling the road and the floors of the woodlands we passed, for this was old forest, the first in the country to be cut down, leaving young saplings which later had succeeded the undergrowth, smothered all brambles in shade, become so tall by 1963 with a canopy so thick, there was no undergrowth, nothing, nothing to snag us in our youthful roaming where no bad had ever happened. Now we sat silent in our seats, thinking of Archie's wet cheeks, the bus in and out through the blotches of shade and light, the bus driver sobbing as she drove us home along the thin roads of our small town. I grew up in a small town and one year the milkman hit a boy on a little motorcycle and it was an accident and this is a poem about that accident. It's called The Milkman. I want to talk about freedom, but find myself explaining how we would gallop on our horses down the old railroad bed, the rails and timbers scrap for war iron and trenches in France, the line perfect for speed, flat and graded. The only danger besides holding on bareback with your arms around your horse's bobbing neck was a steel chain at the end of the long road to keep cars from turning off the road. Horses especially knew it was there, began to pull up after the dash even if we had forgotten. That new boy took the chain down one fall so he could shoot across the road on his minibike to the bed on the other side, for he was from far off and knew no better until the day he was hit by a truck that didn't see him coming from the side. The milkman, who had been, been delivering as long as we could remember, though none knew his name, just the sound of the diesel truck and the clink of bottles earlier in the morning than we wanted to consider because the chain had been removed. The man was not sighted, though he did retire after. The highway, just a shortcut, once a service road, no houses, no reason to drive it except to reduce the time between the dairy and village without backtracking. Thank you.